the NVIDIA GeForce RTX 5080 is a very confusing product. Some would call it a 4080 Ti Super. While on average, it's 20% faster than the previous generation RTX 4080 and 14% faster than the previous generation RTX 4080 Super, it is not faster than the GeForce RTX 4090, which is strange because the previous generation RTX 4080 is anywhere from 35 to 50% faster than the RTX 3090 on average from our recent testing. The reason why this is interesting is because Nvidia has claimed that even the RTX 5070 is faster than the RTX 4090. The thing is, if the RTX 5080 isn't even close to the 4090's performance, what hope does the RTX 5070 have? Before we start, I'm happy to report that I got all of the 50 series GPUs that I have on hand working in Linux. While they are working, I want to reiterate that the drivers used here are from an experimental open branch of the NVIDIA 570 Linux drivers. These drivers are available in the CUDA development branches and they are not complete. Think of these drivers as a beta version or a bit of a proof of concept. And while the results are not terrible, I suspect there's some performance left on the table, but by the time you watch this video, there's most likely going to be official drivers or official open source drivers. The NVIDIA GeForce RTX 5080 Founders Edition is based on the new Blackwell architecture. The GeForce RTX 5080 has 16 gigs of GDDR7 VRAM with a 256-bit memory interface. It uses a new PCIe 5.0 interface and uses the brand new dual flow through design cooler. The design here is exactly the same as the GeForce RTX 5090 Founders Edition. As for pricing, the NVIDIA GeForce RTX 5080 Founders Edition is going to go for around $999 US dollars. If we could get the Founders Edition here in Australia, I would guess that it would be upwards of around about 1700 Australian dollars. To test the NVIDIA GeForce RTX 5080 Founders Edition, I used our AMD Ryzen 7 9800X3D test system. I also included five other cards for a bit of comparison, including the GeForce RTX 5090 Founders Edition. We're dropping almost all of the 1080p testing for high-end GPUs as it's far too CPU bound at 1080p. First of all, Windows testing. Let's start off with Shadow of the Tomb Raider with the highest preset with no upscaling. First up at 1440p, the RTX 5080 comes in behind the RTX 4090, being about 10% slower on average and about 19% faster than the RTX 4080 on average. At 4K, the RTX 5080 is about 18% slower than the RTX 4090 and about 22% faster than the RTX 4080. On to Unigen Superposition. This is a great DirectX 11 benchmark and we're not using any upscaling here because Superposition doesn't have any options for it. First off, 1080p Extreme. The GeForce RTX 5080 is about 14% slower than the RTX 4090 on average and about 18% faster than the RTX 4080 on average. Over to 1440p custom with depth of field and motion blur disabled, we're seeing the RTX 5080 be around 13% slower than the RTX 4090 and around about 20% faster than the RTX 4080 on average. At 4K optimized, the RTX 5080 is about 21% slower than the RTX 4090 and around about 22% faster than the RTX 4080. Next up is Horizon Zero Dawn Remastered with the very high preset. This one uses either DLSS or FSR 3.1 with them all set to quality mode. At 1440p, the GeForce RTX 5080 is around about 6% faster than the RTX 4080. At 4K, we see a similar result with the RTX 5080 being around about 25% slower than the RTX 4090 on average. Over to Cyberpunk 2077 with the Ultra preset with no ray tracing, let's start off with 1440p. We see something really interesting happen here. This is the first time we see the RTX 5080 being faster than the RTX 4090, but only by 4%. What's interesting is the Radeon 7900 XTX is about 2% faster than the RTX 5080 here. The RTX 5080 is however, 
17% faster than the RTX 4080 here. At 4K, the difference between the RTX 4090 and RTX 5080 is around 2% with the RTX 4090 being faster. However, the RTX 5080 is about 22% faster than the RTX 4080 in this test. Moving on to Call of Duty Black Ops 6, we're using the Ultra preset here. At 1440p, the RTX 5080 is about 6% slower than the RTX 4090 and around about 26% faster than the RTX 4080. Whereas at 4K, the RTX 4090 is about 22% faster than the RTX 5080 and the RTX 5080 is around 12% faster than the RTX 4080. Lastly, Black Myth Wukong. We're using the cinematic preset, which is brutal, and I set either DLSS or FSR to performance mode with full ray tracing enabled on all cards. At 1440p, the GeForce RTX 5080 is about 10% faster than the RTX 4090 and around about 14% faster than the RTX 4080. If we move over to 4K, the RTX 5080 is around about 17% slower than the RTX 4090 and around about 16% faster than the RTX 4080 on average. Next up, Linux testing. As mentioned, these drivers are a bit all over the place and we could only get them working on Ubuntu. They did not work on Fedora. Let's start off with Shadow of the Tomb Raider with the highest preset with no upscaling. First up at 1440p, the RTX 5080 comes in behind the RTX 4090, being about 23% slower on average and about 2% faster than the RTX 4080 on average. At 4K, the RTX 5080 is around about 29% slower than the RTX 4090 and about 5% faster than the RTX 4080 on average. On to Unigen Superposition using OpenGL. First off, 1080p Extreme. The GeForce RTX 5080 is about 9% slower than the RTX 4090 on average and about 10% faster than the RTX 4080. Over to 1440p custom with depth of field and motion blur disabled, we're seeing the RTX 5080 be around about 19% slower than the RTX 4090 and around 16% faster than the RTX 4080 on average. At 4K optimized, the RTX 5080 is around about 23% slower than the RTX 4090 and about 18% faster than the RTX 4080 on average. Next up is Horizon Zero Dawn Remastered with the very high preset. We're using Proton to run this and the compatibility with Proton is very, very good these days. This one uses either DLSS or FSR 3.1 with them all set to quality mode. At 1440p, the GeForce RTX 5080 has the same average performance as the RTX 4090, but the RTX 5080 has significantly worse 1% lows. I'm going to put this one down to being a driver issue. At 4K, the RTX 5080 is about 3% slower than the RTX 4090 on average and about 13% faster than the RTX 4080 on average. Over to Cyberpunk 2077 with the Ultra preset with no ray tracing also running in Proton. Starting off with 1440p, the RTX 5080 is about 14% slower than the RTX 4090 and around about 3% faster than the RTX 4080. What's interesting is the Radeon 7900 XTX, it's around 26% faster than the RTX 5080 here. AMD drivers on Linux are very, very good. At 4K, the difference between the RTX 4090 and RTX 5080 is around about 11% with the RTX 4090 being faster. The RTX 5080 is, however, 11% faster than the RTX 4080 in this test. Lastly, Black Myth Wukong. We're using the cinematic preset with full ray tracing enabled. We used either DLSS or FSR set to performance using Proton. At 1440p, the RTX 5080 is about 16% slower than the RTX 4090 and around about 19% faster than the RTX 4080. Moving over to 4K, the RTX 5080 is around about 15% slower than the RTX 4090 and around about 25% faster than the RTX 4080 on average. 
Keep in mind though, these frame rates with these settings are so low that this is unplayable anyway, but I thought I would include them anyway. Here's some metrics I think you guys might find interesting. The averages of all of the tests in both Windows and in Linux. Starting off with a six game average in Windows at 1440p, we see the RTX 5080 is about 8% slower than the RTX 4090 on average, and around about 16% faster than the RTX 4080 on average. At 4K in Windows, the difference between the RTX 5080 and the RTX 4090 is much larger, with the RTX 4090 being around about 19% faster than the RTX 5080 on average, and the RTX 5080 being around about 22% faster than the RTX 4080 on average. Over to Linux with a five game average at 1440p, we see the RTX 5080 is around about 16% slower than the RTX 4090 on average, and around about 8% faster than the RTX 4080 on average. At 4K in Linux, the RTX 5080 is around about 17% slower than the RTX 4090 on average, and the RTX 5080 is around about 12% faster than the RTX 4080 on average. Now for something even more interesting, the combined averages of both Windows and Linux testing. This is a good overall reference point for true performance differences. At 1440p, the overall average performance of the RTX 5080 puts it at around about 12% less performance than the RTX 4090 and around about 12% more performance than the RTX 4080. That sits right in the middle of the 4080 and the 4090. At 4K, the overall average performance of the RTX 5080 puts it at around about 18% less performance than the RTX 4090 and around 17% more performance than the RTX 4080. Once again, putting that right in the middle of those two cards. We covered all of the differences between PCIe generations and our GeForce RTX 5090 Founders Edition launch review, so I'm not going to go over these again in this video. To sum it up, different people are finding different things. We saw anywhere from 1 to 15% differences depending on the title and the resolution. Others have found between 1 to 4% differences, but they didn't test as many titles as we did. Anyway, let's talk about the power consumption and the thermals with this thing. At idle, I recorded the NVIDIA GeForce RTX 5080 Founders Edition consuming around about 23 watts of power while it hitting around about 360 watts of power draw at full load. As for the thermal performance with the new dual flow through cooler, at idle, the GPU temperature was around about 30 degrees Celsius and the junction temperature for the memory was around about 42 degrees Celsius. After one hour of stress testing, the NVIDIA GeForce RTX 5080 Founders Edition hit around 69 degrees Celsius at the GPU and around 72 degrees at the memory junction. What's the deal with the GeForce RTX 5080? I'm a little bit confused about this card. First of all, if we look at the supposed launch price of the Founders card, it's looking like the 5080 Founders is going to be around about 999 US dollars. The GeForce RTX 4080 Founders Edition launched at around about 1199, which from the jump makes the Founders 5080 a 20% cheaper card with 20% more performance. Compared to the RTX 4080 Super Founders Edition, both the RTX 5080 Founders Edition and the 4080 Super Founders Edition have the same launch price. And the 5080 Founders is around about 14% faster on average. So what's my issue with this card? Well, actually it's not this card at all. It's more about the marketing of the RTX 5070. The RTX 5080 is not even close to the performance of the RTX 4090 and yet Nvidia claimed that the RTX 5070 is faster than a 4090. This kind of irritates the living daylights out of me, but that's mainly because this is not the first time Nvidia's done this. Anyways, that aside, I've got mixed feelings about the performance of the RTX 5080, and while the performance is not better than the RTX 4090, it looks like it's going to be cheaper than the RTX 4080 if you compare the launch prices with 20% better performance. 
What will throw this all out of whack is the partner cards. Now I can't say too much about that right now given the price differences and the performance differences, but it can go either way. But stay tuned for that because we have a head to head with the Founders card here and two other cards coming in the next couple of days or maybe it's already out by the time you watch this. At the end of the day, I'm giving you numbers from a bunch of tests that we ran and ultimately it's your money. I can't make you spend it.